Hello my friends and welcome back to Dragon Age Origins. Today's video will be the next installment in our party banter dialogue compilation thing. <laughs> Enjoy! So what's the deal with you and him anyway? Dare I ask? Him? Him who? Is this supposed to mean something to me? You know exactly who I'm talking about. Mr. Let's make kissy faces over there. My, my. You are jealous, aren't you? Did I take your favorite Grey Warden away from you? What? I'm not jealous. I'm horrified. Those blushing cheeks of yours tell a different tale. These blushing cheeks are terrified that you'll suck all the blood out of them once you're finished with them. If I feel the need to suck on anything of yours, Alistair, you'll be the first to know. That was so not what I meant. Perhaps we should go and tell him together about your touching concerns. Perhaps he'll pay more attention to you if you ask nicely. Uh-huh. I think we're done here. Done before you started, in fact. So, you met this sibling of yours? Half-sister, but yes. And you made a promise to help her? Uh, yes. Why would you do such a thing? This woman is a parasite who will appreciate nothing you do. You know this. It's moments like this when I truly appreciate the difference between you and me. <laughs> it is moments like this when I truly wonder at the difference between you and a toadstool. So let's talk about your mother for a moment. I'd rather talk about your mother. Well, there's nothing to talk about. And besides, isn't your mother a scary witch who lives in the middle of a forest? Much more interesting. To you, perhaps, you would find the moss growing upon a stone interesting. You know what's more interesting than that? Apostates, mages outside of the tower. That's illegal, you know. You did not read that in a book somewhere, did you? I hope the small letters did not strain you over much. Oh, we could not talk about your mother. That works for me. So tell me something, Morrigan. Did you live there in that forest your entire life? I left it on occasion, but I always returned. Why? Is that so strange? It was my home. But it was just you and your mother there? No one else? Mother occasionally had company. What? Company? Do I even want to ask? No, you really don't. There is one thing I do not understand, Alistair. Just the one thing? About you, perhaps. Why the deception over your parentage? I'd figure you'd be the sort who knows all about deception. I do. And what use the deception might have had ended when King Caelan perished, did it not? Maybe. I guess I was sort of hoping that would go away. The truth does not go away. I didn't say it was a good plan. So, I take it you did not enjoy your Templar training? That's directed at me, I take it. Do you see any others about who have failed at their religious instruction? I didn't fail. I was recruited into the Grey Wardens. And if you had not been recruited, what would have happened instead? I would have turned into a drooling lunatic, slaughtered the Grand Cleric, and run through the streets of Denerim in my small clothes, I guess. Your self-awareness does you credit. I thought you'd like that. Why do you always go on about how stupid I am? I'm not stupid, am I? If you need to ask the question... Because it hurts my manly feelings, you know. Or one of them. Then I'll be sure to write you an apology once all of this is over. I was educated by the Chantry. I studied history. They don't make stupid Templars. Then I must have been mistaken. I'm very impressed. No, you're not. You're not even listening to me. My, you are smarter than you look after all. Your Chantry must have been very proud. All right, I've come up with one. A question that you can't answer. Are you talking to me? That's right. You think you're so smart. I've got an academic question that I bet you won't be able to answer. Oh, I doubt that. So tell me then, what was the name of Andraste's husband? This is a religious question, not an academic one. You're joking, right? A five-year-old could answer that question. Do you not know more than a child? I care nothing for your religion, and this game of yours is over. Oh, how the mighty have crumbled. 
Have a care where your eyes linger, Alistair. Yes, well, don't worry. It's not what you think. I see. I was looking at your nose. And what is it about my nose that captivates you so? I was just thinking that it looks exactly like your mother's. I hate you so much. Hmm? What? Never mind. You do not truly think I look as my mother does, do you? Have you really been thinking about that all this time? I am simply curious. And not insecure in the slightest, I'm sure. I think I look nothing like her. I don't know. Give it a few hundred years and it'll be a spot-on match. I said that I look nothing like her. All right, got it. <laughs> totally different. I see that now. Sten is not a name, is it? Do you always begin conversations this way? It's your rank, is it not? I've met a few Kunari in Antiva, you know. Not much for conversation, but some of them are quite easy on the eyes. Those are not Kunari. No? They are, what then, very large dwarves with comical accents? They wear the faces of Kunari, but they are Tal Vashoth, fiends of Saharon. They have abandoned the Kun. With titles like your own, though, which makes me curious, what is your name, then? Sten is enough. But it is not your name. It is who I am. Think of it, Zevran. You may have stumbled into a most delightful possibility for your future. Oh, are you dispensing professional advice now? It simply occurs to me that if, say, Alistair were to become King of Ferelden, he may have need of someone of your talents. From what I know of the fellow, it seems there would be a fair difference between what he needed and what he cared to make use of. If Alistair becomes King, it would certainly not be through any brilliance on his part. Whoever puts him there, now there's the one who will need you. <laughs> now that's an interesting thought. You've such a devious mind, my dear. Why have we not made love as of yet? For what purpose? I would sooner stab you in the face than let you touch me, Elf. And somehow that makes the idea even more intriguing. So, what is going to keep you from poisoning your target now that you have been allowed to accompany us, I wonder? You are. You will be watching me ever so closely to make sure I attempt no such thing. And why would I do such a thing? Sneaking into our good graces in order to make another attempt is what I would do were I you. And here I was becoming rather fond of the idea of you watching me closely. It would be a simple enough matter to poison the food in camp. Or cut our throats while we sleep. You seem rather charmed by the idea. It would seem an appropriate result of sparing your life. Ah, well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, then. The next time I am spared, I will be sure to immediately turn upon my benefactors. Will that do? I understand that there are elves in the Kunari lands, then. There are elves everywhere. Hmm, yes. Well, I've heard that the Kunari actually put the elves in charge over the humans. Is that true? Some of them. Only some? Which ones are they? The ones who belong in charge. That is the way of the Kun. How does this Kun determine who belongs in charge? The Tamasrans evaluate everyone and place them where their talents merit. But elves in general merit higher places than humans in Kunari society? Some of them. Back where we began. It's like talking to a water wheel. So I wonder, do you intend to take your mother's place now? Take her place? What do you mean? As the new Witch of the Wild. That was her title, no? When one slays the Queen, it's assumed they'll take her throne. Considering the throne is a small shack in the middle of a cold wilderness, I think I may just pass. And why would you lie to me, I wonder? Ah, is this the part where you hint at some subtle plot of mine? Because you are so very perceptive? So you didn't know what your mother planned until you read it in that book. That's what you said. That is correct. I admire you. You are a wicked, wicked woman. And you are a fool who spends far too much time on his hair. I see your friendship with the Grey Warden is going very well. Is there a reason you say that with a smirk, Elf? I think you know. You and I are not so dissimilar after all. I know what you are doing, lovely woman. And what is it that you think I am doing? 
Besides the Grey Warden, that is. Biding your time, naturally. But for what, I wonder? Why don't you ask him if you're so curious? I doubt that he even knows. I am content to wait and see for myself, however. Then don't bring it up again. You do still intend to kill your target, do you not? Is your reputation not on the line? Are you still on about this woman? I am led to believe that the Crows would never permit such a transgression. They will come after you and enforce. It has come to my attention that the Crows are not always successful when pit against the Grey Wardens and their companions. Perhaps they will send someone competent next time. You wound me. I have considered doing far more than that, trust me. Why do you call yourselves Crows? Crows are scavengers, not killers. I heard that at one time they considered calling us the Kestrels, but, you know, it didn't sing. It didn't dance. Your mother is supposedly the one called Flemeth, the very witch from legend. Is that not true? There is nothing supposed about it. Flemeth is my mother. Hmm. Now is more doubtful of the legend rather than your relationship to this woman. Anyone can claim a name after all. You're welcome to ask her if you ever meet her. You're just her type. Oh, elven and handsome? The sort that will never be missed. Sounds intriguing if you ask me. You assassin types have a death wish, I see. <laughs> Only the really good ones. So, if the legend of your mother is true, Morrigan, does that mean that the legends of her many daughters are as well? To be honest, I have no idea. I've never met any sister of mine, nor has my mother spoken of any. But it could be true, yes? If you exist, there could have been others like you. Long ago, perhaps. Why? We have legends of witches in Antiva, one that tells of a witch of the wild, traveled far from her home to settle in the Tellery swamps. And? You thought I might know this woman? If one legend can be true, why not another? Who knows how many Morrigans are scattered about Thedas, hm? It's not something I'd like to contemplate. Oh? You do not appreciate a little competition from a half-sister or two? Silence, Elf. It is none of your concern. You seem to have quite a disdainful attitude towards Elves, my Kunari friend. Don't take it personally, Elf. I have a disdainful attitude towards everyone. Such sinister glares do you a disservice, dear Morrigan. Yours should be a face that smiles. Do tell. Has no one told you? Perhaps that is not surprising, considering you have lived such a sheltered life. Were you a woman of the city, you would be accustomed to men showering you with praise and gifts. I know as much of men as I need to. I know when one is indulging in pointless flattery, for instance. It is flattery only if I exaggerate the truth to please you. I am but stating a simple fact. Tell me, does this work on other women? I think any woman would like to hear the truth of how her beauty affects a man. Do you not? I think that sort of manure is best reserved for farming. Ah, one day you will realize that you have wasted your youth and beauty on bitterness and suspicion. Mark my words. Remind me to bring you along if we go sailing. The hot air will prove useful. So you do not fear the crows? At all? I think of it more as my desire to leave them far exceeds the fear I possess of them. You think the Grey Wardens will give you safe harbor once all this is done? Surely you are not so naive. I am willing to take my chances. And if you are wrong? Then I will be dead. One does not do what I do and fear death so very greatly. There are fates worse than death. And one of them is being unable to choose which master you serve. Trust me, my dear. I am well pleased with my current direction. These crows of yours, Zevran, are they as extraordinary as you claim? They all but rule over my homeland. Do you find that extraordinary? If true. Are they so powerful simply because they are very good at what they do? Or is there some secret to their power? If there were a secret, it would only remain so if it were not told, my dear. You are no longer bound to such a code? Or do you believe their wrath will be greater than it already is, should you speak out of turn? It may be that I simply do not wish to tell you. You get the most delightful wrinkle in your brow when you are curious. I see. You are impossibly frustrating, you know this. 
<laughs> I do. It is part of my charm, or so I'm told. Has anyone told you what marvelous eyes you possess, my dear? Again with the flattery. Do you not tire from these pointless exercises? In Antiva, women are accustomed to being showered with the praise they deserve. Men should worship you at your feet as you pass. They don't find that incredibly annoying? They are goddesses receiving their subjects, just as you should be. Whatever would be annoying about that? I have no wish to be placed upon a pedestal. But you deserve no less. You should be admired by painters, copied by sculptors, exalted by poets. Surely, you know that yours is a beauty so exotic, it, it would turn the eye of the maker himself. Well, I suppose I... And there we go. I think you owe me five silvers, yes? I hate you all. So I take it that the Swamp Witch and the Grey Warden are, um, intimate? I am hoping that is not a reference to Alistair. Because it believes I am an oblivious moron. Anything is possible. As to the original question, is there a reason you ask? I am simply curious as to whether or not it bewitched the Grey Warden. <laughs> I have no need to force anything from men. Oh, my apologies then. I was about to offer my congratulations for a task accomplished. And not intended as a backhanded compliment at all, yes? Not at all. I'm the soul of politeness. I understand the Swamp Witch is out to slay its own mother. Entirely in self-defense. So it claims. It could not have been its plan from the very beginning, then. I knew nothing about my mother's intentions prior to finding the book. It was your notion I arranged that. Unnecessary, considering it is the only one who can read the book. It could just as well be a journal or a book of recipes. Would you like me to teach you how to read the book? Then you can see for yourself. No, it is testing me. <laughs> well, do you care enough to learn or no? No, I do not care. Then leave me be. How many other forms can the Swamp Witch become? Several. Can it become a golem? Seeking companionship, are you? If it could become a golem, I simply wonder why it would not stay that way. It is a superior form. No, I cannot become a golem. I can learn to become animals, and each form must be learned anew. And how does it learn a form? Does it read about it somewhere? <laughs> it is not a talent one can read from books. You must copy a creature's soul. I do not understand. Nor should you. Rock is unchanging. Allow it to stay that way. Would the Swamp Witch consider explaining the nature of magic to me? I am most curious. Surely there is another who would not be so bothered by your tiresome questions. Perhaps Alistair? I fear the Second Warden has not the knowledge to answer my question. You might ask him anyhow. Certainly whatever he happened to come up with would serve as amusement. I do not understand. I seek enlightenment and not amusement. You're apt to get much further seeking amusement, I assure you. The Swamp Witch is a most confusing creature. I do not understand it. <laughs> You're not the first one to say so. The first golem, perhaps. I will ask the Swamp Witch later, when it is less inclined to make bizarre responses to my queries. You will be waiting some time then, I fear. I would still like to know how the Swamp Witch learns its forms. Eager, are you not? Does the Golem wish to become human after all? A human is a soft and weak form. I desire no such thing. Then why the interest in shape-changing? Unless you secretly wish to become something other than what you are. Is that why the Swamp Witch learned? To escape her form? In a way. It was lonely to grow up in the wilds. To join with the forest, to become one with its denizens. There was a freedom in that. I think it would be an excellent talent for disguises. Or perhaps to walk through doors without hitting one's head, hmm? Yes, exactly. Well, tis not a good enough reason. What is a good enough reason? For which? It said that my reason for learning more of shape-changing was not good enough. What reason would be? <laughs> I do not know. Tell me what it is and I shall decide. 
It could simply decide any reason was insufficient then. You find that maddening, do you? It has a bird-like nature to its sadism. I'll give it that. Good. Let us leave it that way. I have never heard of a thing called a Quinari. Then you have not been listening. We did not row to shore last year. We have been about for centuries. I have listened. I have done little else, in fact. And yet I do not remember anyone mentioning such a Kunari in all my years in the village. Relying on humans as a source of education is a fool's errand. They are rather ignorant, aren't they? And feeble, at the best of times. We have creatures on Parvolan that are similar. The humans call them monkeys. They are dull, cowardly vermin. They cry out shrilly when threatened and throw their own feces. That is an excellent comparison. I wonder if they're related. Possibly. I do not understand what a golem is. Why would anyone create such a being? Why would one create a sword? To strike at its enemies. But you are no sword golem. You speak like a living creature, but act like a possession. I do not know what to make of you. I am no possession. Not now that the control rod is broken. No, it is still in your heart. Do you even realize this? Age by age have men stood up and said to the world, From what has come before me I was forged, but I am new and greater than my forebears, and so each man walks the world in ruin, abandoned and untried, less than the whole of his being. It is a riddle. <sighs> it seems so. So are all of your kind similarly powerful, Kunari? I am not here to satisfy your curiosity, creature. That is true. I suppose I sounded like a human shattering away. I apologize. No, it is I who should apologize. You are no human. You are a vastly superior construct. That's kind of the Quinari to say. If all your people are like you, it's a wonder you haven't crushed the humans under your heel. I have wondered the same thing. One just needs to look at them. They're so... Small. Exactly. You and I, we are of the same mind, Kadan. I have a question of religion, Kunari. For you, Kadan, I will answer. Would its Kun accept a convert that was a golem? I do not know. It has never happened. We accept beings of all walks of life, so long as they are willing to accept their place in the world. And what place is that? One of equality. Within the Kuhn, an individual exists to serve. Hmm, that is less appealing. Uh, would it consider birds to be its equal as well? Birds? Birds are but animals. Enlightenment does not await them. Excellent. That sounds very promising. The Kunare mentioned something of equality when we last spoke. I said that all were equal under the Kuhn, yes. What of humans? Surely they would not be as equal as others. All who accept the Kuhn have their place as any other. In the lands we occupy, even the Elves have come to embrace this concept. And if this place is at the bottom? If that is where one belongs, then that is where one should be. The Konari are a very practical people, Sten. It is as I have always said, but I thank you. I wish to say that it has been pleasant fighting at the Kunari's side. I feel the same. You are a remarkable construct, Kadan. A warrior to be feared. No more than the Kunari, surely. The way it strikes down its foes, marvelous. I smile each time you roar a battle cry, knowing our foes tremble. I could watch you fight all day long. The skill you display, the form, how the light plays on its muscles. I mean, yes, well done with the fighting. You as well. Right. And that wraps up today's party banter video. Thank you again so much for watching, and I will see you again tomorrow with another new Dragon Age Origins video.